Damn it! Again? Next time you won't be so lucky! Catch you the first chance I get! Phantom Thief Nine-Tailed Cat returns, huh? Jewelry on display in the gemstone exhibit hosted by Hamaterasu Corporation was stolen late last night. Peacekeepers declare the culprit is Serial Thief Nine-Tailed Cat. The investigation should yield an arrest soon. They're so full of crap about arresting this guy. They have no idea how to deal with this. The newspapers are Amaterasu's lapdogs anyway. They're not gonna talk about how the thief managed to escape. The Nine-Tailed Cat has been famous in this town for as long as I can remember. They're set to steal their target without hurting anyone, and they always leave behind their signature card. The great thief who appears out of nowhere and vanishes without a trace. No one knows a thing about their identity. They've been stealing expensive stuff from Amaterasu ever since they took control of this town. From what I heard, all the stolen goods are sold or donated to hospitals and, and other welfare facilities. So what, they're Robin Hood or something? I don't like it one bit. Everyone in town is a fan of the cat. Think about it. They're up against the peacekeepers. It's obvious why everybody supports them. Hey, what kind of detective talks like that? I'm disappointed in you, Chief. Thieves and detectives are natural enemies. Cat, dog, I don't care. A criminal's a criminal. <laughs> when did you get all self-righteous about justice? Justice? <laughs> this is about pride. What's the big deal anyway? Newspaper hasn't written a single thing about me! I mean, I'm the ultimate charismatic superstar detective! Unfortunately for you, the cat is way more popular and famous than you are. Damn it! This is humiliating! It's all your fault, Chief! Huh? Why me? It's because you let these criminals roam around scot-free that this cat guy has grown so brazen. Well, I suppose you have a point there. But we've never received a single request to catch the cat. And if no one's hired us, then it's not our job to get out there. Nonsense. That's a coward's excuse. Say what you want, but don't go looking for trouble for no good reason. Even this art gallery case wasn't a formal request. A girl I met at a cafe works at the art gallery and told me something interesting. They say the cat's gonna appear at the gemstone exhibit. The peacekeepers working security are all on edge. So I promised her that if the thief really appeared, I'd catch him. At this rate, I'm gonna look like a liar! What do you expect me to do? You're just gonna let the cat roam free? Leave a cat alone and it won't scratch you. You should really let it go. This thief isn't someone we can do anything about. Besides, they're a phantom thief who's never been caught by the peacekeepers and continues to toy with them. You are such a useless chief, you know that? Fine. I'll hatch my own plan to catch the cat, and you better believe all the credit will be mine and mine alone. Hey, wait! Jeez, I hope he doesn't get into trouble. Still... This phantom thief appears out of nowhere. How do I catch him? I should gather information about the nine-tailed cat around here. 
<laughs> With that many tails, I'm sure I'll grab at least one. All right, time to ask everybody about the nine-tailed cat. Actually... That's nice. Hello, gorgeous. Huh? Don't be scared. I'm a superstar. And starlight will always illuminate a lady like yourself. Lady? Yeah. To me, you're one refined lady. Anyway, do you know anything about the nine-tailed cat? Yeah. Oh? Like what? What do you like about them? They're so cool! The cat is tall and kind of like a model. No, oh, really? Oh, thanks for telling me. So you're a fan of the cat too? Hmm... I'm more like a... Uh, a rival. Rival? Soon. You'll be my fan, too. Aww. I'll be waiting with front row tickets for you. Ta-ta!
Hello, ma'am. Have you seen an awesome, charismatic guy around here? Excuse me? Take a good look. There's one right in front of you. Huh? It's me! Me! I'm the freedom-loving, charismatic detective! Desuhiko Thunderbolt! Pardon me, but I'm in a bit of a hurry. Hold on! I'm in a hurry, too! I really need your help. Uh-huh. I'm investigating the Nine-Tailed Cat. Do you know anything about them? The Nine-Tailed Cat? The thief who stole the gemstones from the art gallery? Yes, that one. Can you tell me anything you know? All I know are just some rumors. Perfect! That's exactly what I want to hear. I heard this from my friend's sister's co-worker, but the Nine-Tailed Cat is actually a young man. A young man? I see. Thanks! That's a big help. Oh, by the way, who do you like better? Me or him? Well, I've never seen the Nine-Tailed Cat's face, so I can't compare. Let's see... Now that I've had a closer look, I guess you're not too bad. Right? <laughs> I get that a lot. How about we step into a cafe and chat for a while? Goodbye. You said you were in a hurry, right? It, right. <laughs> Let's meet again on the stage. I heard the nine-tailed cat reappeared. The stolen Cassiopeia necklace is said to be worth a hundred million chien. That much? I'm certain it's already been sold and the money donated to an orphanage. I wish I could have gotten some of that cash. This reminds me that a few years back, someone wanted to donate some money at the hospital where my mom works. They just dropped off 10 million shin and left. People are saying they think that was a nine-tailed cat. Really? What else? What did they look like? Who are you? Just keep going. What they looked like? Uh, well, the donor wore a hood way over their head, so nobody got a good look at their face. That being said, some think the donor's hair and eyes were a burning red color. Red hair and eyes. That's fantastic info. Thanks! Next time, I'll invite you backstage. Uh huh. I've talked to all the most promising ladies. And I've gathered plenty of information about the nine-tailed cat, so that should be good. A young man, tall and slim, with red hair and eyes. The most outstanding feature is hair color, but wearing a hood would make that hard to notice. That reminds me, the cat wore a hood when I saw him at the art gallery. Wait, the cat I saw there didn't look tall at all. Uh, was it just my imagination? Eh, whatever. I should head back to the agency for now and think of how to capture the cat.
Who's there? <laughs> I've come to steal what's most precious to you. Precious to me? I'm going to take all the fuzz off your head. Ah! Stop it! <laughs> what are you scared about? It's me, Desuhiko. Desuhiko? I suppose that is your voice. But is this your disguise? Who are you supposed to be? Yeah, I tried recreating what the nine-tailed cat looks like based on what people around town said. What do you think? Hmm. I wasn't able to tell until you mentioned it. Uh, I guess it's no good. I was planning to walk around town looking like the cat to draw him out. That won't work. Your look is way too vague. Even fans of the cat wouldn't notice. Yeah, I thought so. Oh, but what if I enter the art gallery like this and try to steal something? Witnesses would think I'm the Nine-Tailed Cat. I guess uh, people could mistake you like that, but everyone only has a rough image of what the cat looks like. Image? That's it! I just came up with a brilliant idea! I have a bad feeling about this. Don't tell me you're really going to try to steal something dressed like that. If I do, I'd be the one who gets arrested. Maybe I can take advantage of the fact that this getup is what the fans are imagining. What do you mean? Just watch. The next time he appears, it will be the end of the Phantom Thief Nine-Tailed Cat. Hey, are you sure the Nine-Tailed Cat will really appear tonight? That's what everyone's been saying in town. The cat is after a real expensive ring. Somebody came out. Thank you, all who've gathered here today. Please, allow me a moment to speak. As you all know, precious jewelry was stolen from this art gallery the other day. The culprit is a thief known as the Nine-Tailed Cat. And we've received word that they will appear again tonight. However, it is obviously a crime to steal from others. As an upstanding citizen, I cannot allow that to happen. Get lost! You're not even with the peacekeepers! Get out of here! Who do you think you are? Who am I, you ask? I am the charismatic freedom lover born unto this world by a goddess. The superstar detective, Desuhiko Thunderbolt! Can you hear me, Nine-Tailed Cat? Your sham of a legend ends today! I, Desuhiko Thunderbolt, will end you! There are still detectives in town? That guy looks hella dumb. He'll never catch the Nine-Tailed Cat. Hey, it's that guy again. Hey, detective! Where's the nine-tailed cat? You sure the ring hasn't been stolen already? Hello, everyone. The phantom thief nine-tailed cat has fallen into my trap and has been captured. Here's the proof. This is the Virgo ring the cat was after. As you can see, the ring is safe. Nine-tailed cat was captured? No way. Well, that ring does look pretty legit. That dumb cat has been imprisoned inside the art gallery. I'll leave the rest to the peacekeepers. I'll be going now. Hold on. Hmm? 
Give the ring back. Oh, but <laughs> of course, I, I fully intend to return it to the gallery's curator. <laughs> I gotta be blunt. I'm way more handsome than that. What? Two detectives? You've been caught in my trap, Nine-Tailed Cat. I was the one who spread the rumor about you appearing here today. With so many spectators here, I knew you'd use a trick to take advantage of the crowd. Who would have thought you'd disguise yourself as me and try to enter through the front door? Damn it! The Phantom Thief has finally been caught? That's impossible. Come on. I'll interrogate you before handing you over to the peacekeepers. Did you read this? A new hero emerges. Nine-tailed cat caught at last. Oh, look at all the attention you've gotten. The peacekeepers won't take this lying down. At last, I'm finally famous! I'm the star that touched down to Earth, here in the city where stars never shine. So, what are you going to do now? Please, don't get me involved. Just watch. My path to stardom has just begun. Speak of the devil. Huh? I wasn't expecting any guests. She's a newspaper reporter. She wants to speak with the detective who caught the nine-tailed cat. Nice to meet you. I'm Anine of the Kanai Times. You must be Desuhiko, the one who caught the nine-tailed cat. I'd like to conduct an interview with you, since you're the new star of Hope and Kanai Ward. An interview, huh? Yeah, sorry, but I only speak to the first person to come see me. Uh, uh well... <laughs> but you're the first one here. Congrats! Uh, thank you! You're really letting this get to your head, Desuhiko. I hope your pride doesn't get crushed later on. Yeah, yeah. There's too much noise here, so let's go somewhere else. This place is too dirty to take nice pictures anyway. Well, excuse me for this mess. Let's go. If anyone else comes asking for an interview, turn him down for me, Chief. Jeez, I've got a bad feeling about this. Thank you so much for taking this interview today. To begin, I am speaking with Desuhiko Thunderbolt in this exclusive interview. Ask me anything, I'll tell you all about it. Well, let's start with the first question. As a detective, what do you usually do on a day-to-day -day basis? In my case, I do a lot of undercover investigations. I'm good at sneaking into places. If the investigation is about a girl, I can get all the information I need. While I'm no good at solving murder cases, I excel in finding out what women want. If you don't mind my asking, what sort of places have you gone undercover in the past? For example, 
A rock star's dressing room backstage? The filming location of a big movie? Are you sure those are the acts of a detective and not some sort of entitled fan? <laughs> of course. Anyway, that's all I can tell you about. Uh, the rest is confidential, you know? I see. Uh, very well. Moving on, then. Do you have any special abilities? Disguise, of course. I'm better at disguising myself than any other detective there is. Of course, that includes phantom thieves. Consider how confident the cat appeared to be. But thanks to my disguise, I won that fight. He was stupid enough to disguise himself as me at that moment. Do you have any tricks you use along with your disguises? Only an amateur would be satisfied with just changing how they look. A real disguise changes the very air around you. I see. Well, next question then. How is your match against the Phantom Thief, Nine-Tailed Cat? Eh, wasn't impressed. Nine-Tailed Cat. More like a plain old stray. It wasn't superior skill that kept it from being captured. Rather, no one else was serious about taking him in. So, where is the captured Nine-Tailed Cat currently being held? Hmm? Oh, the peacekeepers took him away somewhere. <laughs> He's probably cursing me from some jail cell right now. By the way, what does the Nine-Tailed Cat look like? Uh, he's got distinctive red hair and eyes, but otherwise he looks kind of thin and weak. I see. Thank you very much. On to my next question. Do you know the secret behind the Virgo ring? Oh! <laughs> You mean the big Virgo ring secret, yeah? <laughs> uh, what was it again? Supposedly, there's a secret message written underneath the spot where the gemstone sits. A similar message was written on the Cassiopeia necklace the Nine-Tailed Cat stole before. And, deciphering both messages is said to reveal the location of a hidden treasure. What? Hidden treasure?! The ring was hiding something that big? Where was the message written again? Huh? Why do you have that ring? Oh! Uh... <sighs> Wasn't that ring taken out of the art gallery by the Nine-Tailed Cat? I thought it was returned to them after the cat was captured. Why do you still have it? It's, you know, I, uh, missed my chance to return it. <laughs> Dasuhiko, don't tell me you took advantage of the situation and kept it for yourself. Oh, but no, you're making it sound worse than it is. I really was gonna return it. Really? Totally. How about we go return it now, together? I'll accompany you as long as you allow me to continue the interview. Yeah, I'll agree to anything. Interview and all. Anyway, what did you say about hidden treasure? I didn't see a secret message anywhere. It's right there. Where? Behind the pedestal. Here, I'll show you. See? It's written right here. What does it say? Hmm. Thanks for the ring, you dimwit detective. Uh, that's the secret message? Dimwit detective? Wait. 
dimwit? Is it talking about me? You've realized it far too late, oh mighty detective. You're no newspaper reporter! You finally figured it out? Don't tell me you're... That's right. I'm the phantom thief nine-tailed cat that you thought you had captured. The real one, that is. So you're the cat? That whole farce at the art gallery was quite entertaining to watch. The red-haired man you caught in front of the gallery was the chief at your detective agency, wasn't it? You placed two complete disguises on him and then exposed him in front of the spectators. Just as you planned, the people in town thought he was the nine-tailed cat. Did you put on that little show to stain my public image? That's right. You sure are sharp. To the citizens of this city, you're nothing but a conglomeration of their own images and assumptions. By destroying that image, I knew they'd lose all respect and awe for you. Soon, the people of this town would begin to hate criminals. That'd make it a lot harder for the real cat to commit crimes. Your work as the Phantom Thief would be done for. You really think your games are enough to make the Nine-Tailed Cat disappear? As long as the cat is needed in this city, she will never die. Unfortunately for you, your plan needed much more thought. You got some nerve. It's true that I underestimated your guts. I never thought you'd come directly to our office. And that get-up, it's no disguise. So, the whole red hair and eyes and other stuff were all made-up rumors. I like to spread rumors about my appearance. It was all just insurance for my sake, but I didn't expect it to catch on so quickly. You detectives sure are easy to fool. You're quite the woman. I'll take that as a compliment. By the way, there is no secret message. That was all a lie to get you to show me the ring. And as planned, I'll be taking this. Are you going already? Yes. Thank you for playing along with my lengthy interview. Well, so long. Wait. The battle's not over yet, Nine-Tailed Cat. What is it now? The one you're holding is a fake. Check out the real deal. No way! You said my plan needed more thought. <laughs> well, did you anticipate this part? If the cat can't be caught, the only option is to lure her out. That whole show you insulted was just part of my trap to lure you. I knew you wouldn't stand for your reputation as a great phantom thief to be tarnished like that. The reason you lost is because you weren't willing to yield on your pride. You would have been better off just letting yourself get arrested back then. You might think you're some sort of Robin Hood, but you're nothing but a criminal. As a detective, I can't let you go free. I thought you were just some cocky idiot, but you're not bad. Well, I'm bad at investigating cases, but I'm not too shabby when it comes to negotiations. So, what will you do now? Hand me over to the peacekeepers? Well... That was the original plan, but I changed my mind. You're going to let me go? No, I can't do that. But I don't intend to give you up to the peacekeepers either. <sighs> what are you saying? I can't let you go. Not only as a detective, 
but as a man as well. Huh? Will you marry me? Marry? Are you serious? Totally serious. I could search the whole world, but no one is more exciting than you. A phantom thief and a detective couple? Isn't that great? But that ring isn't even yours in the first place. It doesn't matter. If you accept it, then we're partners. I see. Does this mean... You really are... a fool. Is that a yes? Hey! Wait! Hey! I haven't heard your response yet! <laughs> So, how did the mission go? Did you succeed? Uh, I lost it. Lost what? The jewel, my confidence, and my love. Jewel? Wait, you mean the Virgo ring? You gotta be kidding! The art gallery was nice enough to lend it to us in order to help capture the Phantom Thief. And you lost it? What am I going to do? We'll go bankrupt trying to pay it back. We'll be in debt for life. <laughs> Don't just sit there feeling sorry for yourself. You've got to do something. Hey, did you hear the Nine-Tailed Cat has returned? I thought they captured the thief. What got stolen this time? Is it true the Phantom Thief has struck again? E yeah. What was stolen this time? Surprisingly, nothing. Instead, the Phantom played a prank, leaving a ring on the finger of a statue. Hey, you there! Me? Yes, beautiful lady. You will succeed in all you do today. Consider it your lucky day, so to speak. Lucky day? Yes, it'll be the best day of your life. If you were ever to play a game of chance, today would be the day. Shall I read your fortune? I'll tell you what your lucky number is. Mm. I do not fare well at gambling. This is horrible! Someone just fell from the sky! Is this part of my lucky day? It appears as though something is happening over there. I 
wonder if it could be some sort of festival. What's going on? Looks like someone collapsed. Some guy fell from a building nearby. Was it a suicide? Pardon me. Please let me through. Are you a doctor? Uh, no, I am not. Do you know this man? No, I do not know him whatsoever. Then why are you here? Um, today is supposed to be my lucky day, so I thought I might be of some use. Huh? <sighs> oh, you are still breathing. What luck. Hey, he's trying to say something. Three? Three? Um, I was not quite able to hear you. Could you please repeat yourself? Oh. Hey, hang in there. He's not breathing. But where's the ambulance? Maybe that was a dying message? It sounded to me as though he was trying to say the number three. If I am not mistaken, those were the last words he uttered before death. I must not let them go to waste. Oh, if I rewind time, I can hear his message again. Repeatedly hearing someone's dying message is something only I can do. What are you mumbling about? If you're not gonna help, get out of the... Actually, why not try to prevent him from dying in the first place instead? Protecting the people is part of my duties as a detective. I may still make it in time if I hurry. Hey! You there! Pardon me! I am in a hurry! Oh, that noise! <gasps> Are you all right? What happened? Something you must say to me? Please, go ahead. Two. Two? As in the number? Hey, you. What happened? Are you alright? Should I call an ambulance? No need. I am fine. I shall be right back. message was different this time. First was three, next it was two. I wonder what it could mean. Hey, you there. <sighs> this is exhausting. I might not make it. Oh, perfect timing. Pardon me, please let me in! Forward! Full speed ahead! Are you alright? <clears throat> what happened here? Can you talk? <sighs> must have cushioned his fall. Hurry up and call an ambulance! Thank goodness. It is true. Today really is my lucky day. 
What a happy ending! What a happy ending! And that is what happened the other day. That's not a happy ending at all! Nothing was solved! Did the guy live? Yes, he managed to survive. Although he is currently in a coma. So you still don't know why he fell from the sky? The newspaper says it was an attempted suicide. It seems he climbed over a fence on top of the building. I bet the peacekeepers made that up after another half-assed investigation. Regardless, it has nothing to do with us. I mean, you're right and all, but... Doesn't it bother you? That sure is a weird dying message. At first it was three, then two, then finally one, right? It's like... a countdown or something. I've never heard of a changing dying message. That's because dying messages are normally a one-time event. So perhaps the message changed because I turned back time. No, that doesn't make sense. The victim had already fallen by the time you arrived at the scene. So whether it be a suicide or a homicide, the events leading up to the fall shouldn't have changed. And I doubt he'd want to tell you something different each time. What do you think, Alara? Should I assume you're requesting to hire me with that question? No, did, did, never mind then. It was dumb of me to ask. No matter the problem, asking for my assistance is the wisest choice one can make. Except you charge an arm and a leg each time. Naturally, I must charge an appropriate rate. Although, in this case, it doesn't seem like a criminal act. I suppose I don't mind, if we consider this a conversation among friends. Oh, so we're friends now. What's with a change of heart? I wonder why the dying message changed. Do you know why, Halara? I can deduce the possibilities. However, I cannot declare anything unless I investigate the scene myself. So an investigation is still necessary. By the way, according to the newspaper, the victim fell from a four-story building. Floor one is a luxury brand shop. Floor two is a restaurant. Floor three is a beauty salon. And floor four is a casino. Each floor has windows facing the street that cannot be opened. Thus, it's very likely the victim fell from the rooftop. Do we have an ID on the victim? He's a 25-year-old man. He works at the shop on the first floor, but often goes to the other floors as a customer. So the people in the building were his acquaintances. There's still a chance someone else from the building took him up to the roof and pushed him off. the dying message indicates who did it? If that was the case, then it's weird the message changed each time he got to the victim. Or maybe there's someone named 321? <laughs> that can't be it, right? You can't say that with certainty. Okay, fair enough, but that doesn't explain why the message changed. That reminds me, when the victim mentioned one the last time he spoke, he actually said, there. There? Did he find something? That I do not know, though he did look as though he was searching for something. What does that mean? 
The victim must have had something in his hand while he was falling. The impact of the fall caused him to drop it. I see. So the victim found the item, then left the message one. If you think about it that way, the victim's message makes sense. And it's likely the item is related to the case. Fubuki, did you find anything at the scene? My deepest apologies. I did not notice anything of the sort. Hmm... You may be careless, but I doubt you'd miss something so big you'd need two hands to hold it. Which means it had to be something small enough that it could be easily missed. Hold on. The victim must have held this thing in his hand the first time he fell. But instead of one, he said three that time. Was he holding something different each time he fell, or was he holding more than one thing? Considering when Fubuki turned back time, it's hard to believe he held something different each time. However, we cannot eliminate the possibility there may have been multiple items. Mm. I am now more lost than ever. If we follow the logic, we will always arrive at our destination the truth. But I am truly lousy at that. Don't give up, princess. Let's start from the beginning. Very well. I shall try. Um, if the victim was holding something, that would be a key clue in this case, right? First, regarding the size of what he was holding... That's right. Even Fubuki, who was at the scene immediately after the victim fell, didn't notice that small item. Therefore, it's reasonable to believe that whatever he held was something that could fit in the palm of his hand. And the impact of the fall caused him to drop it. The third time, the victim realized he dropped it and appeared to be looking around for it. And when he saw it, he said, there, one. Hmm. But why would the victim mumble the word one after seeing it? Normally, that would mean that whatever was on the surface of the item displayed the number one, would it not? So the victim saw that and read the number one aloud. Huh? <laughs> that's a dumb conclusion to make. No, that's a sensible way to think about it. It's logical as well. The victim saw it and mumbled, one. So we should assume it was actually written there. Are you serious? So whatever it is has the numbers written on its surface, right? What is it, then? I don't get it. In the beginning, he said three, not one. It's not strange at all, if we assume the number changes depending on the situation. The number can change? Wait, then that must be it! Whoa, Fubuki! Do you know what it is? Y yes Although, it is just my guess. The item the victim was holding... Such as a die, or something. A die? Oh, I get it. The number would change depending on the roll. Hold on. It first went from three to two. Isn't it strange the numbers weren't the same? Fubuki arrived at the scene after the victim fell. By that time, the die would have fallen from the victim's hand. Which means that whatever number turned up on the die should have been set by that point. It couldn't have changed. You're right. Do you have a counter-argument for this? In that 
that case, perhaps this explains it. The angle from which he saw the die would have been different. The angle? The first time, the victim was lying face down. If there was a die in his line of sight, he would have only seen one side of it. And what about the second time? The second time, I arrived just a bit earlier, so I tried to help the victim up. At that moment, he probably saw the top side of the die. I see. So that's how it went. It's true that under normal circumstances, only the number on the top of a die is red. He landed on the taxi the third time, so it is possible that the roll of the die changed. Fubuki, you sure are sharp this morning. <laughs> really? So basically, it went like this. The victim fell from the rooftop while holding a die. He dropped it once he hit the ground. Which means the die was cast. As the victim was knocking on death's door, he mumbled whatever number he saw. Great job deducing that much, Fubuki. Does it appear that I'm becoming a better detective? Yeah, but not nearly as great as me. We still lack an answer regarding the final part. The final part? What was the victim trying to communicate with his dying message? Now that you mention it, I'm totally right. Why did he even bother reading the number on the die? Perhaps it was to inform us of the identity of the culprit? There is no doubt that the die was meant to point out the culprit. Nearing death, the victim sought out the die to inform you of that. But in his days, the best he could do was say the number he saw. So the die was pointing out the culprit? Wait, wasn't there a place that had something to do with dice in the building the victim fell from? Oh, so perhaps the culprit was in there? the culprit was in the casino on the fourth floor? That's probably it. You did it, princess. I didn't think you'd be able to figure it out. There is no way I could have done so on my own. You have my deepest thanks, Halara and Desuhiko. Yep. Now bow down to my charisma. Still... Just making assumptions here. We have no solid evidence. If someone said we made it all up based on his dying words, that'd be the end of it. But we made so much progress in our investigation. Is there nothing to be done about it, Halora? It would be one thing if we had the die as evidence, but it would be extremely difficult to find now. If only I had noticed it and picked it up. No, Biggie. It's not something you notice normally. Uh, hey, Halara. What if we use your forte to find out where the die went? I can't use my abilities while the victim is still alive. Damn, you make it sound so ominous. Leaving this case alone is still a valid option. No one made a request for us to investigate, so it's not an urgent matter. The case will solve itself once the victim wakes up. The culprit might attack the victim again before that happens. Since they didn't get him the first time, they might try to finish the job. But that would be terrible! This is all my responsibility! What 
should I do? I don't think there's any need for you to feel responsible, but... I wouldn't feel good about leaving this unsolved. Hey, Halara. You know of any ways around this? There is one. Stop teasing us and just say it! Oh, and before you ask, I'm not paying a damn thing! A clue, then. Ask the fortune teller. Are you a villager in an RPG or something? Uh, the fortune teller! Huh? Did something spring to mind? I told you in the beginning, remember? A fortune teller approached me! What's that got to do with this case? You should interrogate that fortune teller about the casino. You may hear something... interesting. I understand! I shall depart after breakfast. But hey, are you going alone? Ugh, fine, I'll join you. Alara, you're coming with, right? I'm not going without a formal request. So much for being friends. All you have done is more than enough for me. Thank you very much. I can handle the rest on my own. Uh, I'm here too, you know. Hey, you there! Hmm? Uh, us? Yes, you lovebirds. You make one fine pair. You will succeed in all you do today. Consider it your lucky day, so to speak. Lucky day? Yes, it'll be the best day of your life. If you were ever to play a game of chance, today would be the day. Shall I read your fortune? I'll tell you what your lucky number is. Yes, please. Hmm. It appears that multiples of three are your lucky numbers. If you're going to gamble, be sure to bet on increments of three. I get it. This is what Hilara was getting at. What do you mean? You're in bed with that casino up ahead, aren't you? What are you saying? Casino? I don't know what you're talking about. You claim we have good luck to scam us at the casino. That's a baseless accusation. I'm just an ordinary fortune teller. You must have heard about the guy who fell from the casino's building. The victim was nearly killed by someone who works there. I bet he knew too much about your secret. If you know something, you better cough it up now. Or you might be next. <laughs> and if you're working with dangerous people, you should call it quits today. We can take care of the rest, so tell us what you know. <laughs> As you said, my job is to lure customers in and guide them to the casino. The lucky number thing is all a lie. In fact, if they pick those numbers, they will surely lose. But I truly believed it was my lucky day. I'm sorry. I actually don't know how to tell anyone's fortune. I just followed the manual. And that manual was made by the casino? Yes. Cheating is rampant in the casino. They really conduct some dirty business there. Do you know the man who fell from the building? Yes. He's what they call a hired plant. He mixes in with the customers and steers them a certain way so the casino can cheat them. So, my ears perked up when I heard he attempted to kill himself. I knew he'd made a mistake and was being silenced. I 
see. So that's what it was. Hey, are you really gonna do something about them? If they find out I told you all this... Leave it to me. Who do you think I am? I am the superstar detective, slayer of evil, Desuiko Thunderbolt! Uh, that's not very reassuring. It appears the entire casino is in on this crime. There will only be more victims if we leave them be. We might as well see this through to the end. Though, I bet the Chief would tell us to stay out of trouble. But what shall we do? We lack even a single piece of evidence. I would feel terrible if we had to involve the fortune teller more than necessary. I guess we'll have to rush in from the front. Which means... We are going on an adventure! Yeah! Are they really gonna be all right? This looks like the place. Indeed. Do you have a plan, Desuhiko? Yeah, of course. The plan name is Leave Things to Chance. Wow, that sounds exciting. Let's go, Fubuki. Right. Wait. Laura, what are you doing here? I knew you'd rush in without a plan. You are correct, Halara. Carelessly sowing confusion will simply result in more victims. Don't be so rash. Are you trying to get in our way? It would be one thing if you just stayed out of it. I'm saying the two of you don't stand a chance. If you're up against a casino, let me handle it. Huh? Are you going to help us? Bet on me and you are sure to win. Listen, here's the plan. I'd like to convert all this into chips. Uh, right away. Call the owner over. I'd like to play a game. Um. Tell the owner I want to talk to him about that attempted suicide. Uh, understood. How can I help you? You don't seem affiliated with the Peacekeepers. I'll be direct. You tried to erase one of your hired plans. What are you talking about? I'll bet all of my chips. If you win, then this issue will disappear. We'll conclude our investigation and never return. And of course, you can keep all the chips. Are you sure about this? And if you win? You will confess your crimes and turn yourself into the peacekeepers. Hmm. Hmm. Very well. I don't know what crime you're speaking of, but... As the owner of the casino, I cannot turn down such a direct challenge. I expect you to keep your word. Of course, and you as well. So, what would you like to play? 
bring some dice. A game of craps? Yes, but let's cut out all of the complicated rules. This game will consist of four dice. Each player will take two and roll them at the same time. Whoever gets exactly seven wins. If both rolls land on seven, then it's a draw and the game continues. Very well. We will prepare the dice. Are you fine with that? I don't mind. You'll roll the dice. What? Me? But you are far better at gambling, Laura. I'm going to find out what's going on. Just roll the dice like you normally would. However, if the opponent rolls a seven, turn back time. Oh, right! I do have that ability! Are you ready? Let's play! Well, well. Looks like that's game. However, if the opponent rolls a seven, turn back time. Palara, I just turned back time. He rolled a seven right at the start. And my roll was terrible, by the way. I completely lost. I knew it. But you can do this as many times as you want. That's your strength. R right Are you done with your huddle? No amount of planning will help with dice. You must let luck take over from here. Now, let us play. Yes, game on! This time... Looks like that's game. However, if the opponent rolls a seven, turn back time. <sighs> I have returned. This is the second time. The opponent rolled seven on the first throw both times. The timing of the dice roll was different from before, so I thought there would be different numbers. Are casino owners blessed with natural luck? No, it's not luck. He's probably cheating. Ch cheating Seems like he's going all out. Well then, there's no reason for us to hold back either. But what are you going to do? If he can cast a seven each time through cheating, no amount of turning back time will help. Moreover, there is a limit to how many times I can use my ability. There is a way to prevent his cheating. Really? However, prevention doesn't guarantee us victory. In order for us to win, you must roll a seven. Right. Can you do it this time, Fubuki? I can certainly try. I became a detective by challenging my own fate. I refuse to lose here. I'll join you in your battle. Right! Are you done with your little meeting? You can talk all you want. But I don't think it will change the numbers on the dice. Now, shall we play? Before we begin, I'm thirsty. Can I get some water? Very well.
Oh, excuse me. What are you trying to do? My hands. Let's begin. Very well. I'm counting on you for the key. This game won't end until you roll a seven. Come on, Seven. Come on, Seven. There! You... How did you... Wow! This is incredible! I won! I really won! Impossible! I can't lose with these dice! Seems like the game is over. You must now confess your crimes. Glad to see you have regained consciousness. Are you all right after that awful fall? What? No, it's me, Desuhiko. Hmm? We went over this before we entered the casino. Were you even listening? As I suspected, the dice used by the casino were rigged. The victim must have intended to let others know about it with a dying message. It was obvious they'd cheat if we challenged them to a match involving dice. Which is where I came in. Well, I distracted the staff. Halara messed with the dice. So that is what happened. I was only able to win thanks to Halara. No, I didn't touch your dice, Fubuki. Huh? Then I really rolled a seven on my own? Yes, you won that game. Really? Thank goodness! I won that game! Great job, Princess! Yes! Even if it was just a little bit, I believe I grew as a detective. since that day. There's no way I can win against someone who can turn back time. How oh, rude. I would never cheat like that. Come on, Desuhiko. One more game. I put in the fridge went. I was saving it for my coffee. Hmm, beats me. And that's my seat, you know. How much? Huh? How much do you want for it? I'll pay your asking price. Well? You gotta be kidding. Fine. Just keep sitting there. I will. Huh? Someone's coming. I wasn't expecting guests today. Right this way. It's a bit cramped in here. Are you the chief of the Nocturnal Detective Agency? My name is Tetra. Pleased to meet you. I'm the chief. That's just one of our detectives. Oh, excuse me. 
your detective was sitting at the biggest desk here, so I assumed that... My seat gets stolen the moment I leave it open. <laughs> um, uh, let's sit down. Um, I was told you investigate... murders. A murder case? Uh, it's possible for us to handle it, but... What we can or can't do depends on whether or not the peacekeepers have already gone through it. I see. My father passed away in a rather bizarre manner. The peacekeepers declared it was an accidental death. But... I just can't believe it was an accident. The peacekeepers usually try to declare any unnatural deaths as accidents. Why do you suspect that it wasn't one? My father kept tropical fish as a hobby. One morning, he was found dead, drowned with his head stuck in the fish tank. Do you really think that could be an accident? He drowned with his head stuck in a fish tank? Can you describe the situation? The fish tank is set rather low, so you can view it from above. My father was in a kneeling position, with his head dunked into the water. Hmm... That sure is bizarre. What did the peacekeepers have to say? They say he was electrocuted, and passed out when he touched the temperature control switch with wet hands. And he fell into the water and drowned, unfortunately. Are you sure the cause of death was drowning? Yes. That appears to be the case, without a doubt. A trustworthy doctor did the autopsy. I see. Well, from what you've said, you can't really deny that it could have been an accident. No, the problem is the room where my father passed away. It was obvious that someone else had rummaged around. What do you mean? Well, the room has lots of tropical fish tanks lined up. But on the day my father died, all of them were shattered to pieces. And of course there was water and dead fish all over the floor. Someone must have forced their way into the room to do something so terrible. I believe my father was murdered by whoever did that. Mm. This must be a murder. Please, uncover the truth of my father's death. What do you think, Halara? Beats me. I wasn't paying attention. Don't lie. There's no way you couldn't hear us. You can assume I don't exist, unless pay is involved. I can pay. My father left me an inheritance. Oh, don't mind my detective. Our rates are always reasonable here. Then you'll investigate this case on my behalf? Huh? Uh... Yes, of course. As detectives sworn to protect this town, we can't leave any mysteries unsolved. <sighs> Thank you. I'm so happy I worked up the courage to come here. The Nocturnal Detective Agency is here to protect the peace of Kanai Ward. You can always count on us. As for investigating this case, we'll check out the crime scene soon. Promise. <sighs> Jeez. That was rather reckless of you to promise. It's not like I have a choice. I can't just abandon people in need. I'm Yaku Furio, Chief of the Nocturnal Detective Agency. I gotta protect this town. Do you even have a single lead to solve this case? What? Well, of course. I'm a detective, after all. If I proceed with the investigation, I'm sure I can find some kind of clue. But I'll need your help, Halara. That depends on the payment. 
Uh, you know I don't have a lot of money. And you know that I don't work for cheap. Then... How about a deal instead? What deal? If you solve this case, I'll let you keep a cat here. <laughs> really? Yes, really. Hey, where are you going? To the crime scene. Hold on. The client just left. Why don't you wait until tomorrow? Fine. I shall review the case's records until then. Alara's fee is cheaper than I thought. to investigate the case. Well, that's our duty at the Nocturnal Detective Agency. Your house is pretty big. Your father must have been well off. Yes. My father owned a medical devices company. He contributed to Kanai Ward's medical advancements for years. I simply can't believe he met his end like this. We'll find justice for him. Thank you. I am in your debt. This is my fiancé, Jaren. We've been living together for about a year now. Nice to meet you. I'd like to ask you more about the details later, but can we take a look at the scene for now? Oh, before that, do you have a photo of your father? Of course. Here's a picture from when he was still alive. Thank you. Alara, over here. I'll leave the investigation to you. It's a bit too cramped for all of us to be wandering about. I'll keep speaking to them outside. Talk to me when you're done. Understood. Now, time to review the cards I've been dealt. Definitely want to remember this. There is a sticky substance stuck to the door frame. Perhaps tape residue? Fish tanks have been shattered. There is broken glass scattered on the inside, which means it's certain someone smashed it inward. Why would someone do this? I see. It's a regular sliding window with a crescent lock. There are no suspicious marks on it. There is a small veranda outside. We're on the second floor, so any rain that falls off the eaves flows to the drain.
What is this? There is a stain here that looks like a horizontal line. Upon close inspection, there appears to be a faint outline of the same stain along all four walls. An ordinary vent. Hmm? There's some blue paint on the inner side of the frame. Looks like something rubbed against it. This may have something to do with the case. Hmm. That's about all I can investigate for now. I should go talk to our clients before I observe the crime scene at the time the body was discovered. The crime scene has been inspected, Chief. Thanks. There are a few things I'd like to confirm. Yes, please ask me anything. Can you give me the details of when you discovered the body? It was... I think around 6 in the morning. My father usually woke up early for breakfast, but when I went to get him, he wasn't in his room. So I looked around and noticed Sugar barking at this room. Sugar? That's the name of our dog. Sure is happy. She's rarely friendly with anyone. She barks at me all the time. There, there. Uh, shall we continue? Oh, sorry. Sugar was barking in front of the room, so I opened the door to take a look. There I saw my father. His head was in the fish tank. He was already gone. I heard her scream and ran over, but what I saw took my breath away. The fish tanks were all destroyed, and the floor was covered with water. All the tropical fish Father loved were scattered across the floor, dead. Were they valuable? I'm not sure. I don't know how much they were worth, but the fact is, my father cared for them a great deal. If the fish were expensive, do you think someone tried to steal them? Are you implying my father's murder was an afterthought? Well, I'm just considering possibilities. If they were going to steal the fish, I doubt they'd smash the tanks. You're right. Do you know the estimated time of death for the victim? Um... I believe it was around 10 o'clock the night before. When was the last time you saw him alive? Right around 7 that night. I ate dinner with him. He went to his room after that. Does anyone else live here? It's just me and him now. The servant left after making dinner before 7. Tell me, what were you doing around 10 that night? Um, after finishing dinner with my father, I did some cleaning and washed the dishes. Jaren came to the dining hall around 8 for dinner. And then we watched TV in the living room until around midnight. Yes, I know for certain we were together between 8 and midnight. Did you ever get up during that time? Such as to go to the bathroom? I don't think so. Were there any screams or sounds of a struggle around 10 at night? No, not at all. I see. That leaves me wondering who entered that room, when they did, and why they smashed all the fish tanks. The fish tanks are large and have thick glass. 
you'd think you'd hear them being smashed. True. All I know for certain is that we didn't hear anything like that. Do you often come in and out of this room? Not at all. Only my father used this room. What did the peacekeepers have to say when they saw the state of things in the room? They said my father was stressed out. That he lost control and smashed all the tanks himself. Was he actually stressed out? Truth be told, my father was lamenting over a prized tropical fish he had accidentally killed that morning. I thought he could have done something extreme, given how much he regretted his mistake. He did look rather depressed. Still, my mild-mannered father would never do something like this! Did you notice anything strange about your father during dinner? He was sad about the fish, but he ate normally. I didn't notice anything in particular. It's hard to think he was so distraught that he'd smash all the tanks on his own. You're right. But that's what the peacekeepers told us happened. I'll take another look around. For now, I'd like to ask you to leave the room. So you're gonna do that thing, yeah? I'm counting on you. Let's wait outside. The trump card is still face down. Time to use my post-cognition to see how things were at the time the body was first discovered. The victim's body is leaning against the edge of a fish tank, with his head inside. Like the other tanks, this one is smashed up too. Looking closely, he is soaking wet. It'd make sense if it was just his upper body, but for his whole body to be soaked is unusual. It's not locked. Anyone could come and go through here. Perhaps this is how the culprit entered the place. There's a dead tropical fish in the drain on the veranda. Why would that be there? The paint stuck on the frame can be seen here.
I'm beginning to see the truth behind this case. That's all the investigating I need to do for now. Are you done? The dog has something in her mouth. Hey, Sugar! What's this? That's Sugar's favorite toy. It's just a rubber hose tied up in a knot. Ever since she was a puppy, Sugar has loved playing tug-of-war with a rubber hose. So I still make toys out of hoses like this. But I don't think I made one for her recently. Where did she get it from? Wow, that's interesting. Let me take a look. Wait, don't touch it. What's wrong? Put that in a plastic bag without touching it directly. I believe it's evidence. That's evidence? Consider it a precaution. Um, how's the investigation going? Are the peacekeepers right? Did my father pass away due to an accident? Or was it... The answer is clear. This was no accident, but a murder. Huh? Really? What makes you think it's a murder? My thinking. No, it's not enough to disprove the theory that it was an accident. Reviewing it more carefully... The victim died with his head in the fish tank. Is that right? Yes, that is certain. As you can see, this fish tank was destroyed like all the others. That is far too strange. It means something logically impossible occurred. Impossible? What do you mean? I shouldn't have to explain it. If the victim drowned with his head in the tank, then it had to be filled with water. But as you can see, the fish tank is destroyed, meaning it is unable to contain water. Like with the other tanks, the water spilled out when it was smashed, emptying it. So how could the victim drown in a fish tank that held no water? Oh, now that you mention it. The peacekeepers claim the victim was disoriented and smashed the fish tanks himself. But if the victim was still alive when he smashed the fish tanks, it would have been impossible for him to have drowned. In other words, the victim was drowned, then placed next to the fish tank to make it seem like an accident. The culprit must have believed this camouflage would be enough to fool the peacekeepers. So my father was murdered? Yes, there is no mistake about it. This is murder. Hold on. If the culprit wanted to make the victim look like he drowned, why did they destroy the fish tank? Didn't they realize their cover would be blown? And plus, all the fish tanks were destroyed, not just that one. It must have been part of their plan for the peacekeepers to overlook this contradiction. However, destroying the tanks required a lot of effort. If the culprit did so despite the contradiction it created, then we have to assume there was an unavoidable reason behind it. An unavoidable reason? So, who is the culprit? I must investigate further to find that out. 
I'll report back once I find the answer. Yes, please. Has anyone outside your family entered or left the house recently? I don't think so. Were there any tradesmen who came to work on your place? I can't think of any. Allow me to change the question. Have you recently done any remodeling or repairs to the home? Oh, now that you mention it. The rain gutters on the roof were broken, so Jaren fixed them. He fixed the rain gutters? Yes. He's an avid DIYer. He not only fixed the broken parts, but also checked the gutters around the whole building, which was a lot of work. I see. That concludes my investigation. What? Are you sure that's enough? Jeez, you're always off in your own world. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Our ace detective isn't very friendly. That being said, I believe this case will be solved soon. Please be patient for just a bit longer. Thank you. Alara, just as you suspected, it could be the fiancé. Jaren has been living in the client's home and mooching off her since he got fired from his job a year back. He's in quite a lot of debt, too. At one point, he was spending almost all his time in casinos. He kept asking the client's father for money, but was always denied. Seems the father was also against their marriage. So money is the motive. If the father were to die, the daughter would inherit everything. So if he married her, the money would be his. Makes sense. The thing is, that man has an alibi. The victim's estimated time of death is 10 at night. There's no mistake that Jaren was with the client at that time. It makes no sense to suspect Tetra, since she's our client. So we have to assume his alibi is airtight. Right. I agree. His alibi is perfect. Not only was he with Tetra at 10, but he was also with her for two hours before and after. So, as it stands, it's impossible for him to have killed the victim. No. The alibi isn't a problem. It's possible if a certain trick was used. A trick? But I still lack hard evidence. Perhaps it's worth rolling the dice here. Hey, are you sure about this? We'll make our move tonight. Let's go to the client. In this case? That's right, miss. Allow me to explain. The key detail for this case is the victim's cause of death. Without a doubt, the victim died by drowning. But making it look like he drowned in the fish tank was camouflage. Why would such a thing even be needed? Because it secured the killer's alibi. You said that the victim's time of death was around 10 p.m. In other words, the culprit secured their alibi at the same time as they murdered the victim. Is that really possible? Through a certain trick, it was possible to drown the victim even if the culprit wasn't there. Drown him without being there? The trick the culprit used was... First, it involves this rubber hose.
that's... Sugar's toy. If you untie the knot, it returns to being a hose. This was what was first used in the crime. How was it used? Don't tell me that's the murder weapon. If you check the vent, you'll see the color of paint scraped on there matches the hose. It was likely passed through the vent. Someone put the hose in the vent? Why would anyone do that? It's nothing special. The hose was simply used for its original purpose. Its original purpose? One end of the hose was placed on the edge of the rain gutter on the veranda side. Prior to this, the culprit adjusted the rain gutter so that the hose could be inserted into it. The rainwater from the gutter passed through the hose, filling the room. Huh? What do you mean, uh, Hilari? You, you think this place got flooded with rainwater? That would drench the whole place. When the body was found, the room was, in fact, drenched. But that was because of the broken fish tanks, right? That's part of it. But the main reason was due to rainwater pouring into the enclosed room. Wait, wait, what do you mean? What's the point in flooding this room with rainwater? The culprit's goal was to secure their own alibi at the estimated time of death. This trick was necessary for that. Um, I don't get it. Can you explain from the beginning? Let's go over what the culprit did on the day of the crime, in order. First, the culprit mixed sleeping pills into the victim's dinner. While the victim was asleep, the culprit proceeded to prepare the trick. Sleeping pills at his food? That reminds me. My father did seem sleepy shortly after eating dinner. After dinner, the victim likely went to his room to lay down. The culprit then sneaked into his room and carried him out while he was asleep. That was how the victim was transported to this room. At this point, you're sure he was still alive? Of course. If the culprit murdered the victim earlier, then their alibi wouldn't have worked. The culprit had to murder him in such a way that would secure their alibi. The preparations were done in this room. After bringing the victim here, the culprit used duct tape on the gap near the door to weather strip it. Weather strip? What's that? It prevents water from leaking outside. What do you mean? Let me explain. After weather stripping the door, the culprit started destroying the fish tanks. The culprit likely covered them with cloth to dampen the noise. Once he smashed all of them, he leaned the victim onto the fish tank. The culprit then moved to the window on the veranda and weather stripped the outside of it. Finally, they took the hose connected to the rain gutter and passed it through the vent to the inside of the room. Preparations in place, the culprit left through the veranda and returned to the mansion as if nothing had happened. How does that complete everything? The victim was still alive at the time, right? When was he murdered? The victim naturally drowned after being left alone for several hours. Huh? How's that? The rainwater from the rubber hose flooded the room in a few hours. The whole room was turned into a fish tank, this time filled with rainwater. And that is how the victim drowned. The whole room was flooded? That... can't be! The proof lies in the stained walls. The day of the murder, the room must have been filled to that line with rainwater. Rainwater killed the victim? Correct. Only in this city could such an approach be possible.
The rain never stops in Kanaiwan. This makes it easy to estimate the amount of rainfall to a certain degree. So it is not impossible to create this alibi trick with some calculation. I think that's a bit of a stretch. Wouldn't it take at least half a day for the room to fill with enough rainwater to drown the victim? I'm sure it would require more rainwater than usual to accomplish it. Which means you'd need to gather all the rain falling around this giant mansion. Gather all of it? How? It would require slight adjustments to the rain gutters. After that, the rainwater would flow to the veranda. Adjustments to the rain gutters? There would be plenty of water if all of the rain that pours upon the mansion is rerouted to this room. That explains how the culprit secured their alibi while drowning the victim. In the morning, before the body was found, they removed the weather stripping and drained the water through the veranda. If you check the drain in the veranda, you should find dead tropical fish that were carried out with the rainwater. The culprit smashed the tanks beforehand to prevent rainwater from being stored inside. Well, that's how I would have done it. But maybe the culprit didn't realize that before they started draining the water. Seeing the fish tanks filled with rainwater, the culprit panicked and smashed all of the glass to hide the evidence. They must have carelessly broken the one fish tank the corpse was leaning on in the process. Isn't that how it went, Jaren? I'll be direct. You are the culprit. Hold on. Is this some kind of joke? Why would I kill my father-in-law? That's... that's stupid! But... you were fixing the rain gutters a few days before the incident! Th that's because you asked me to fix them! How does fixing some stuff pin me as the culprit? That's crazy talk! So you intend on maintaining that you're not the culprit? Of course! Then we'll have to ask our little friend for the answer. Come here, sugar. This is the rubber hose used for the trick. There are scrapes on its surface. That's the proof. I'm sure the culprit tried to dispose of it tying it into a knot before throwing it away. But our friend here found it for us. Good girl, sugar. Only the culprit has directly touched the rubber hose. I'm certain his scent is still on it. Tell us, sugar, who do you smell on this? <laughs> this is complete nonsense. I won't accept it. If I have to, I'll kill all of you. Hey, don't tell me that you're really... I was so close to getting all that money. Calm down! Hey! Why me? I can kill the woman anytime. I'll start off with you. Damn you, detectives! This is your fault for sticking your nose into my life! Can you handle this on your own, Chief? I'm pretty bad at this sort of thing. Please help. You saved me. I never thought. 
thought it would be like this. What am I supposed to do? You're not alone. Huh? That's what she's saying. If you ever need help, come to us. The Nocturnal Detective Agency will always be at your service. Thank you. As promised, you can keep that cat here. I don't need your help. That's what the cat is saying. Come on, this cat thinks it's some sort of hard-boiled detective? Well, I suppose I don't mind. This city is a difficult place to live. Even for the animals. Right. I hope we can keep solving the mysteries here, to make the city a better place. And make it a nicer place for them to live, too. I sincerely hope so. You're so cold to humans, but you like animals. Are you teasing me? See, there you go again, making that scary face. Seeing you play with the cat, you look kinda cute. It sure would be nice to see more of that smile around here. <laughs> I hope you keep using your powers to change the city. I know you can do it. For their sake, too. That depends on the payment. Come on. Well, how's this? Consider it the reward for this case. And maybe you could ask for permission next time. Thanks. Is always awaiting me upon my path. Like trees neatly lining the roadside, casting dark shadows at my feet. Even if I manage to overcome them and make progress down that path, when I turn around, the cruel truth is waiting there. The shadows are a procession to my own funeral. To live means to continuously die. Every human is nothing but a walking corpse. And so, I too am dying in this moment. doesn't seem to be moving at all. And the management company isn't responding either. I guess we just have to wait. If you wait long enough, everything will come to an end. Just as there is rain unceasing, a day will come when the sun doesn't rise, and when the oceans dry up too. One day, you will die, and so will I. 
Is that supposed to be a joke? How can you talk about death in this situation? I'm not enjoying this situation enough to make light jokes about it. I think I'd find things a bit more enjoyable if I wasn't trapped in here with you. I apologize if I've offended you. I wish to avoid all unnecessary fights. Same goes for me. Uh, sorry I raised my voice. I'm not used to situations like this. Nor am I. We found something we agree on. Aren't you afraid? Afraid? Of all this? We're stuck in an elevator, hanging in midair. What if something happens and we fall to our deaths? I don't think I'm afraid. What if the elevator is never fixed and we're trapped here forever? Then it'll be like a coffin. I actually think it would be rather cozy. I could just sleep here until I die. What's with you and your death wish? It's not like I intended to have one. It's hard to describe. Thinking of death is like... breathing to me. Do you find it fun to live like that? Isn't that what life is all about? There are things that I find fun. For example, I love reading stories. For some reason, I feel more alive when I can invest in a story's protagonist. I also love gazing at the beauty found in nature. Seeing plants sway in the breeze brings joy to my heart. You sure are a strange one. Am I? What about you? What makes you happy? Well... I suppose I like to observe life. Observe life? I used to be a nurse. I've seen many lives saved and lost at the hospital. Life should be more precious than diamonds, but some people are treated more poorly than a pebble on the road. Isn't that strange? A life is a life, so why should its value be different depending on the person? So now, whenever I look at people, I watch their lives, I wonder how valuable each life may be. You're also kind of strange. Am I? Speaking of which, I didn't catch your name. I'm Vivia. Who are you? I'm Rio. Rio? I think we may have met before. Do you remember? Vivia, everyone else is out on a job. How long are you gonna stay there? Until I die? You gotta be kidding me. Do I have to pull the pieces of you out of there once you're a skeleton? If you have free time, why don't you help work on some unsolved cases? Chief, do I look like I have a lot of free time to you? You look like you're so bored you could die. Look, just hear me out as a way to kill time. There have been a series of suspicious deaths lately. People jumping to their demise from a certain building. The first one was over five years ago, and people have been periodically jumping ever since. There's been over 10 confirmed cases. What's suspicious about that? They came across a building to jump off of when they happened to feel like dying. That's probably all there is to it. That could be true for one or two cases, 
but over ten times in the same spot? That's unusual, no matter how you look at it. Are you suggesting someone is pulling the strings behind the scenes? We won't know until it's investigated. It'd be an absolute nightmare if someone is getting their kicks killing people and making it look like suicide. For the sake of the town's safety, it's not something we can ignore. That's where we come in. There's no point in investigating it. All we will find is boring reality. No matter how boring it is, it's still reality. There's value in finding it. Detectives are such troublesome creatures. Aren't you one too? Huh? Don't look at me all surprised. Why'd you come here if you're no detective? Aren't you here to solve mysterious crimes and help those who are lost? Uh. He asked me why I came to this town. I don't understand it myself. I'm not actively searching for a place to die just yet. I'm not here to be a detective searching for the truth. It's nothing so pure or sincere. The reason I came to this city was due to my impatience with living. did I seek by coming here? What do I expect from this place? That was a woman in a red raincoat. That reminds me, the chief did mention something. Around the building where the suicides occur, a suspicious woman in a red raincoat has often been spotted. I'm not interested in the truth, but I am interested in her. I should try to tag along behind her without being spotted. I see. This is the perfect building for dying. We've met before? Are you sure about that? I don't remember you at all. Are you sure it was me you met? There's no mistake. You have that smell. Smell? You smell faintly... of death. 
What do you mean by that? That's rather rude. Do you live in this building? Yes. Why? Uh -huh. From what I've heard, there hasn't been anyone living in this building for a long time. Who said that? Oh, was it the people around here? They probably have a grudge against this place. They say the building blocks the sun, or that it's sinking into the bedrock. What about all the people who have fallen to their deaths from this place? Is that nothing but a groundless rumor, too? <laughs> of course it is. But it isn't. It's fact. Even the newspapers have articles about it. If you live here, then you must have heard about it. <laughs> Many unsolved cases in the city have been completely left alone. Of course, this has nothing to do with me. I have no interest or desire to know the truth. However, I am somewhat interested in you. <laughs> Are you hitting on me? I suppose you could take it that way. I see. To be honest, I'm interested in you too. Although it's more that your life force makes me curious. It's... how do I put this? Faint. Thinner than paper. Almost as though I can see death waiting on the other side. I could say the same about you. Hmm. Sheesh. This is a hassle. I guess I'll get to the point. You killed them, didn't you? I... did it? You lured people from the city here and pushed them off the building, making it appear like suicide. Why did you kill them? There's no benefit in it for you. For fun? You wanted to see them die? Or did you develop a special interest in the value of people's lives? If so, that makes you a serial killer. <laughs> Me? A killer? Well then, I guess that means you're trapped inside an elevator with a killer. Strangely, i found myself in situations like this often. Whether I want it or not, death finds its way to me. You're not afraid? Afraid? No, it's more like... Observing from a great distance as dark clouds slowly spread out over the ocean. I don't quite get it, but it doesn't sound joyful to me. Though, you were like this from the very beginning. Truth be told, I can tell when someone has a death wish. I sense their desire to go to the other side. Yes, you remind me of them. The other side? Did all those you lured here feel the same way? Lord? You're mistaken. I didn't do anything myself. I was just... here. People like you happen to show up here, then they depart to the other side on their own. You really want to insist that you weren't involved? That all those who died came here of their own accord? That's right. Aren't you the same way? Me? Perhaps. I want to die someday. And perhaps this is a fitting place for it. The view here is nice, don't you think? That's certainly an added benefit. Hmm. The journey here wasn't easy. But things are just getting started. Vivia, 
Let's save Kanai Ward. Together. That's not why I came to this city. Right. I'm counting on you then. Wait, 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 what did you say? Did I mishear you? I don't care what happens to Kanai Ward. And I have no intention to obey orders from the WDO either. I just want some peace and quiet. A calming place where time will gently pass by. What are you talking about? You're not gonna find that here. The only place you can find perfect peace is heaven. And the only ones who can reach it are the dead. Wait, don't tell me you... Just leave me alone. I can't do that. We need your help. Hey! Vivia! I've always been able to see the dead. And what they tell me is always true. The truth has been exhausting for me. For as long as I can remember. Even when I cover my eyes and ears, their voices continue to whisper it to me. Please, be quiet. No matter how much I beg for it, the calm will never come. Where's the perfect peace? It's found in death. Ah. There's the look. Everyone who steps into this elevator has the same look in their eyes. They want to escape reality as soon as possible. They don't care where they end up, as long as they can get away. This elevator will take you to your desired exit. The path to the other side. And it's your job to see them off. You've seen so many on their way from here. It's like you are the guide to the afterlife. So what if I am? Aren't you similar? Hmm. Perhaps that may be true. It moved. Life is like this elevator. Once it moves, it will not stop. I can hear them. Hey, Vivia! Where are you? Hey, Vivia! Where are you? That voice. Do you recognize it? Uh, no. If you have any attachments in this world, I suggest you don't depart. Attachments? If that's the case, why did you go to the other side? Huh? The first of those who died was a woman wearing a red raincoat. Her name was Ryo. It was written in a newspaper article. Why do you still ride this elevator, even after death? Isn't it because you're still attached to this world? Uh, who are you? You don't seem like an ordinary human. I'm a regular detective. I just happen to have one foot on the other side. I see. Still, you surprise me. You knew I was already dead. I told you in the beginning, and you smelled of death. <laughs> you did. You're responsible for stopping this elevator. Using some spiritual power, or whatever. You haven't been guiding the suicidal to the roof of this building. You've been stopping the elevator in an attempt to make them reconsider. You sure are a mean one. You knew all along. 
that you try to save them? Yes. As I'm sure you know, I haven't been able to stop a single one. More than ten. And I've watched all of them go. That's why I think it's my fault. Because I chose this place for my own death, it's become rather famous for suicides. I was just tired of living. I wanted to go somewhere far away from this place. But you regret it. Yes. That's why I always stop the elevator whenever someone comes here. So I can speak to them. But I've never been able to convince them otherwise. All I've done is provide some time to think things over. Everyone who comes here has claimed none would be saddened by their deaths. I've never been able to get them to recant those words. That should be expected. After all, it is the truth. Everyone must overcome the death of others to keep on living. No one can remain in place and look back every time. Is that so? From here on, I can do nothing to stop this. Please listen. Even if you get to the roof, don't step out onto the floor. Why? Because they will try to take you. As long as you don't listen to them, you'll be able to shake it off. Because you're here to investigate what happened, not for your own death. I don't know about that. The moment I got on the elevator, I think I made up my mind. No! You must be determined to survive! Otherwise they will take you! Life and death. I fail to see the border between the two anymore. They both overlap. I can no longer tell which one is the real me. Then please, think of the people you will leave behind! You must have some in your life. Are you really going to depart without saying farewell to them? There must be someone you'll regret not saying goodbye to. If I had someone like that, I wouldn't be here. I have no one. We need your help. Isn't it cool to have a detective agency in a submarine? If you ever have trouble here in Kanai Ward, just come on by. The other detectives and I will always have your back. In exchange, you better watch out for us, too. What a pain. If you ever need something, let me know. I want peace and quiet. Huh? I want to be left alone. There's no way I can do that. We're pals, aren't we? Vivia, you've barely eaten a thing since you came here. You're looking kind of emaciated. I'm eating well enough. That's not for eating, that's for reading. Same thing. How could they be the same thing? Do you hate the food in this town or something? The hotel restaurants offer lots of different choices. I'm sure you'll find something you can eat. All right, today's my treat. Let's go get dinner at a restaurant. Why bother with all that trouble? I wish you'd leave me alone. I can't do that. I may not look it, but I can be pretty persistent. 
You told me one thing, so now I have to do the opposite. That's just how I am. That's what made me the detective I am today. <laughs> Wish for death. At this rate, you'll be taken away. They're growing stronger. Each new one makes them more formidable. They will even take hold of the living. We've arrived. They're coming. Death awaits me here. Don't go any further! Huh? They aren't moving. It's almost as though they haven't noticed you. I thought so. They're only able to take away the living. I'm the same as you all. I'm a ghost. No way! However, in my case, my body still lingers in this world. What does that mean? Who are you? I've already told you. I'm an ordinary detective. I just happen to have one foot on the other side. I decided to come here in my ghost form to try talking to you. And thanks to that, I can't be dragged out of here. Really? I don't quite understand. But you sure are a mysterious person. refuse to let someone take me away from here. That is not the peace I desire. So you've reconsidered. There is no need for you to be imprisoned here. I think your atonement has been fulfilled. Isn't it about time you sever your attachments here? I want to remain behind. I need to ensure they don't take anyone else who comes here. Not everyone is as strong as you are. I'm not strong at all. I've just grown used to death. Also, will the elevator move again? Or is it stuck on the roof? Yeah. Until someone pushes the button. Vivia! Are you there? That's... Chief Yako. Ah! He's not here? Damn it. I'm at the wrong place. I thought he'd come here to investigate. I'm so exhausted. He took the stairs all the way to the roof to chase after the elevator. He must have been worried about you. I've watched over ten people depart, but he's the first one I've seen come looking for the dead. 
You have a place you can return to. Perhaps that's the difference between us. Honestly, I don't care for all the noise. I'm rather envious of your world. However, if you have a place to return home to, you should. Home, huh? I find myself hesitating. I don't know which path I should take. Isn't it obvious? you go please go back to him i'm sure he's waiting for you to return vivia i was looking all over for you You had such a solemn look on your face when you left, so I had a hunch. What happened? I got... a bit lost. Getting lost at your age? Then again, you didn't come to this city that long ago, so... I guess that makes sense. Anyway, I'm glad you're okay. Let's go back to my awesome agency office. Death is always awaiting me upon my path. Like trees neatly lining the roadside, casting dark shadows at my feet. Even if I manage to overcome them, make it to the end of that path. When I turn around, the cruel truth is waiting there. The shadows are a procession to my own funeral. To live means to continuously die. Every human is nothing but a walking corpse. And so, I too am dying in this moment. However, as long as I continue to travel this path, I may enjoy some peaceful scenery. Beyond the truth, perhaps the peace I desire can be found there. Darling. Darling. Chief, you understand me? Oh, 
Oh, don't worry. I'm the ultimate master detective. I won't cause any trouble for you. That depends on the payment. I got... a bit lost. We haven't grown up at all. been waiting for you, my darling. I'm sorry, but I quit. Louis! I promise I'll figure out some way to pay you by tomorrow. Please wait just another two days. No, no, a week. Wait for another week, please. It's not about the money. Take a look at this town. Everything's changed. Nobody wants detectives here. That's not true. The place has grown so big, it's just harder to see those in trouble. There are many people in need of our help. Where are they then? We haven't had a single customer for a month. If there's any trouble, just ask Amaterasu. They do everything, right? Why bother hiring a detective? But this is our town. If we don't protect it, who will? Hardtown? How long will you keep dreaming? This place belongs to Amaterasu now. But we promise we protect this town together! But protect it from what? Let the peacekeepers handle it. I hear that Amaterasu pays them pretty well. I'm hoping they'll interview me there soon. Yako, I, I, I feel bad saying this, but... You should quit being a detective and find a proper job. What? You think this gig isn't proper? Yeah, that's right. In fact, I think you're out of your mind. Listen, you leave me alone from here on out. I don't want you dragging me down when I try to join the peacekeepers. Hey! <sighs> 
I'm all alone now. Hey there, Chief. When are you gonna pay your rent? Sorry, I'm gathering the money for that right now. You said that last week! And if you can't get me the money by today, I'll sell this place off to Amaterasu like I first planned. They'll pay a lot better than renting it out to you. I understand. I'll do something about it today. Actually, could you wait until the end of the month? Not a chance! Jeez. Are you with the Nocturnal Detective Agency? Yes? I'm looking for this person. I'll put a down payment of 100,000. If you find the target and bring her to me, it'll be one million. How about it? A, a million? I'll do it. Please give me this job. The woman currently works at a lab for Amaterasu Corporation. Amaterasu again? That's annoying. Is there a problem? If so, I can find someone else. No, there's no problem. Yeah, screw Amaterasu, am I right? Wonderful. Contact me once you find that woman. Understood. Um, just for my reference, what do you do with the gal once I find her? You'd be better off not getting too nosy. A million cover six months worth of rent? Luck is back on my side. I'd better start on the job right away. Excuse me. Oh, what nice weather we're having. <laughs> it's raining? Oh, uh, uh I like the rain. <sighs> yeah. Fine, here's the truth. I'm a detective. Someone hired me to search for you. Ah, uh, got it. I think I know why. I probably know your client, too. So, are you going to contact him? I'll go right now if you want. Wait! Damn it. What am I doing? I should have just called the client right away. Um, who is my client? He didn't seem like the usual sort. I, uh... I work as a detective because I want to protect the city. I can't work for him if he's a criminal or something. Even if he's my client. <laughs> Are you laughing? Hey, I'm dead serious about my job. Sorry, I was just contemplating how your head must be full of rust. I'll take that as a compliment? It wasn't one. Well, I suppose an antique has its own charms. Antique? Your client is from our lab's rival organization. He's probably a headhunter. It's not uncommon. I get offers like this all the time. Some try more forceful methods, such as hiring a detective. Oh. Because you're a researcher at Amaterasu. That's right. 
To be honest, it's not that great of a place. My boss is an ass, and my colleagues are all depressed. When their own research doesn't go well, they yell and throw mugs at me. Just the other day. Anyway, if my research is successful, it'll open a whole new field in regenerative medicine. It's still ongoing, but so far, it can repair nerve cells by simply ingesting medication. Do you understand how incredible that is? Do you see? Yeah, uh, I don't know about all this. Are you really supposed to tell me what you're researching? Shouldn't that stuff be kept secret? I'd really love to avoid getting dragged into a weird mess. Oh, no. Well, whatever. Just make sure you don't tell anyone else. You should be good at that if you're a detective, right? Of course. Well, then... Will you also keep quiet about where I am? Yes, of course. Wait, hold on! You're asking me to lie to my client? That's entirely different. How so? You could just say you never found me. This is my job. It'd be one thing if he was a criminal or something, but a headhunter... There's no reason for me to keep quiet. My livelihood is on the line. A million, a million is on the line. And I say I don't like it. Can't you respect my wishes? I live in this town. You said you wanted to protect us, so why don't you start with protecting me? Well, uh, hold on. I work for Amaterasu because I'm from this town. I wanted to stay here, so I chose to work for them. I don't want to go anywhere else. If you're from around here, then you should feel the same way. You were born here as well? Will you really sell me out for some cash? Or will you protect your fellow citizen, born in the same town? Which part is your real work, Mr. Detective? I knew I shouldn't have spoken with her. After hearing all that, is there any possible way I could sell her out? Is that something a detective would do? Alright, I'll leave you be. But you said you're not happy at your current workplace, yeah? In that case, I think you should really consider his offer. No matter what comes my way, I have no plans to change my mind. I love this town. Yeah. I also love this place. It's why I work as a detective. Damn it! My million! You... You're... I found you! Get out of here now! That's not the sort of headhunting I'd imagined! You bastard! I won't let you have your way in this town! I'm the only detective Kanai Ward's got! You got that? Guess this is the last chance I'll have to enjoy the scenery. Ah, ah, oh. I heard your detective agency was here. Are you okay? You're hurt. Do I look okay to you? I am hurting all over thanks to you. I lost my pay? And now I'm being forced to cover the damages to that cafe. All my friends are gone. I have nothing left. Well, um... I'm sorry. Why are you here? 
The client's long gone. I have no business with you. Why do you insist on being a detective? Even if you're doing it for the city's sake, aren't you getting tired of it? When I was a kid, I'd gather with all the neighborhood kids and play detective. I loved it. I made matching badges for my friends and we went around patrolling. I was so proud to wear it on my chest. I let it get to my head. I said, our group of detectives would protect this town. It's been decades. But I still can't bring myself to lie to my childhood friends. Kanai Ward is going through some major changes. All the more reason why we need detectives here. So, I've decided to continue being the only one. You haven't grown up at all. That's... Thanks for protecting me earlier. You know, more people may be coming after me. So I'd like to make you an offer, Mr. Detective. How would you like to work as my bodyguard? I knew this day would come. Thank goodness for my research. This medicine can regenerate nerve cells. It's still in development, but I suppose I can leave a sample behind. It might be completed if someone takes over my research. It may even regenerate zombified brain cells. Look at you. Protecting me. Thanks, my sweet detective. You've done well. If the medication doesn't help, maybe you'd feel better if you saw me again? Hmm? <sighs>